السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن النيم في الله سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين we praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى we thank him upon all conditions we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his household his companions we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless them all and to bless every one of us in this beautiful eve, during the last ten nights of this lovely month of Ramadan, wherein we seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. Oh Allah, you are most forgiving. You love to forgive. So forgive us, Ya Allah. Brothers and sisters, we know that at times in our lives, there are people who say bad things about us behind our backs. There are people who spread rumor about us. There are people who say things that are not true. There are people who say hurtful things that sometimes we don't know how to respond to. And sometimes it causes stress for us. It causes a lot of anxiety. And it makes us unhealthy sometimes. So at the time of the Prophet wasallam, they used to say some very bad words about him. They accused him of being a poet and a magician. And they accused him of being so many things that he was not. The reason why they did it was jealousy. That's it. They were jealous of the fact that Allah had chosen him. So in order to save ourselves from feeling depressed when others speak, because we cannot control their mouths, but we can control the way we feel about it to a great degree. Number one, do not be interested to know what people are saying about you. Don't be interested. Do not find it interesting and waste your time asking, what did this one say? What did that one say? Are they speaking bad about me? That is very bad. Don't be interested. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in surah Qaf, which is the 50th surah of the Quran, verse number 39. فَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ Bear patience regarding what they say about you. Bear patience regarding what they say about you. Now, it's easy to say bear patience. But Allah gives us a remedy. He tells us to do something that will help us to bear the patience. So what is it? وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ Rabbik And declare the praise of your Lord. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Declare the praise of Allah. Get close to Allah. If you want to be, if you want to be assisted, you need to know that you have to declare the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without the declaration of the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it won't be easy for you to bear patience. So declare the praise of Allah. I praise you, O Allah. I thank you, O Allah. I glorify you, O Allah. You are the greatest, O Allah. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, etc., etc. This is the praise of Allah. But when should I praise Allah? That's a question someone might ask. So the same verse continues to say, قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا وَمِنْ آنَاءِ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّحْ وَأَطْرَافَ النَّهَارِ لَعَلَّكَ تَرْضَى Subhanallah, Allah says, قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ Before the sunrise. وَقَبْلَ غُرُوبِ الشَّمْسِ قَبْلَ غُرُوبِهَا Before the sunset. And during a portion of the night. In fact, if I were to read the verse of Surah Qaf, Allah says, فَاصْبِرْ عَلَى مَا يَقُولُونَ وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ قَبْلَ طُلُوعِ الشَّمْسِ وَقَبْلَ الْغُرُوبِ وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّحْ هُوَ أَدْبَارَ السُّجُودِ He adds to it, in the darkness of the night, praise Allah. And after every prayer, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After every prostration, you praise Allah. So, after the salah, you know that it is the sunnah to say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Allahumma anta salamu wa minka salamu. Subhanallah. Do you know what that means? Oh Allah, you are as-salam. As-salam, everything to do with peace is included in the name as-salam. 
Subhanallah. And all salam, every form of peace comes from you. Grant us this peace. That's what we are asking after we make salam in salah. When we are ending our prayer, we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah on both sides. And then we say, oh Allah, you are as-salam. And from you is as-salam. We are seeking from you that salam. We are asking for peace. This is why the result of a true salah should be the achievement of inner and outer peace. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that peace. When we fulfill salah, take your time, relax. You need to love the fact that you are putting your head on the ground for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see how you feel. We move on to Surah Al-Dhariyat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this surah, surah number 51 of the Quran, the reason why he created us. Many people ask, why did Allah make us? Well, Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind for any other reason but for them to worship me. Now, some people might ask, well, how is it? I tell you, my brothers and sisters, Allah made us. He knows why He made us. We are going to return to Him. People have already returned to Him. So we have no option to say, oh, but you know, it doesn't make sense or it makes sense. That is Allah telling us, I created you to test you. Are you going to worship me or not? I will give you. Will you still worship me? I will take away from you. Will you still worship me? I will keep you happy. Will you worship me? I will make you sad. Will you worship me? If you do, you have passed the test and you end and you come back to me. I will grant you your prize. Subhanallah. As simple as that. This is why life is so short. And this is why everyone's life has difficulty in it. Every single person has difficulty in his life without exception. Everyone has a problem. Nobody, not a single person has had everything they wanted in their life. Impossible. That is proof enough that Allah has not kept this world in order for us to just enjoy forgetting where we are going. Subhanallah. Death itself for us is considered a problem, right? Humankind, when someone dies, they start crying. They, subhanallah, become depressed. Subhanallah, may Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Sometimes because they are going to miss them. And sometimes because, subhanallah, they don't believe in the hereafter. So they start crying that this person has come to an end. A mu'min believes in the hereafter. So as much as we are going to miss them and it's normal to shed a tear or two and to say a dua or two, in our hearts we have hope. And this is what will save us, inshallah, from the calamity, the depression that overtakes people upon the death of a loved one. May Allah make it easy for all those who's, who've lost loved ones to go through with sabr and with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقَ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ I don't want from them any sustenance, nor do I want mankind or jinn kind to feed me. They don't need it. I don't want it. So they don't need to do that at all. I am not to be fed, nor am I to be sustained. In fact, Allah says, Inna Allah huwa razzaqu. It is Allah who will feed, who will sustain, who will grant. He is the all-powerful, subhanallah. So these are the verses, verse number 56, and the subsequent verses of Surah al dhariyat where Allah makes mention of the purpose of creation. And this purpose, He speaks about it in a few places in the Qur'an. All of it is connected to your deeds, what you're going to do on earth. He's going to test you, He's going to see, and He will place tests in your life one after the other. If you think you have a massive test right now, once that one is over, trust me, another one is coming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never test us with tests that are too big for us to succeed or to pass. Amen. Then we have Surah Al-Najm. At the beginning of Surah Al-Najm, Allah declares that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's utterances are not from him, but rather they are inspired by Allah, revealed. وَمَا يَنطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ He does not utter from his own whims and fancies, from his own desires, from himself, but in fact it is revelation that was revealed. Now, there are people who say, we don't want to accept what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has said, we will only take the Qur'an. 
That is the most foolish statement because the Quran itself came from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He brought it, he said it. It was from Allah to him and he delivered it to us. So if you don't believe the man and you don't trust the man, how can you have taken the Quran? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sense. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who truly believe. A man brings to you something, you say, I'll take this, but I don't believe you. Subhanallah. I don't want to listen to anything else. He is the one who will explain to you what the Quran has. The detail of what the meanings of the verses of the Quran hold. Who knows them best? The one whom it was revealed upon or you and I. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand. Thereafter in Surah Al-Najm, there is something interesting that Allah makes mention of. You see with all of us, we would love to have good education, to give our children good education, to be able to get a job, to be able to be qualified. Mashallah, this one is a doctor, that one is an accountant, this one perhaps is a rocket scientist, etc. Mashallah, they've gone to school. But as a mu'min, a believer, that should not be the limit of our knowledge. Our knowledge needs to be balanced. You have the dunya. As much as you are keen on it, you need to be even more keen on the akhirah. It is wrong not to teach your children the Quran. Who is Allah? Who is the messenger? Who are the angels? What is the hereafter? What is this all about? What is the deen? What are the rules? What are the regulations? What is Islam? What does Allah require of you? When you die, what's going to happen? And are you preparing for, the, for death? When you have problems, what about these problems? How will you marry? How will you choose a spouse? Why should you be having children? Etc. Etc. These answers are are absolutely important. You may never learn them at school, but you will learn them, inshallah, through the teachings of Allah and His Rasul and through the guidance of your parents and those who are the scholars of the deen. Subhanallah. So the point I'm raising is we need to qualify the knowledge that we have to ensure that the limit of our knowledge is not only worldly, but rather it includes that which is going to help us in the hereafter. My Quran, my Salah, how do I fulfill Salah? There are people whose children grow up without knowing rules about cleanliness, pubic hair, etc. What to do, what not to do. These matters, some of the youth today have confessed to me that we never knew that we had to do anything because parents never spoke to us. People were shy, they took it for granted. And nobody actually taught people rules and regulations regarding intimacy as well. Some of the People get married and they don't know what ghusl is all about. What you need to have a bath, etc. When and how. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. My brothers and sisters, it's our duty to learn and put into practice. Convey to our children. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A person whose limit and extent of knowledge solely rotates around the earth, that is bad company. If they are not interested in the akhirah, stay away from them. If they turn away from the verses of Allah, stay away from those people. If they are turning you away from Allah and His verses, stay away from those people. Listen to what Allah says in verse number 29 of Surah Al-Najm. فأعرض عمن تولى عن ذكرنا ولم يرد إلا الحياة الدنيا ذلك مبلغهم من العلم. Allah says, turn away from those who have turned away from our remembrance, from the remembrance of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And those who only want the worldly life do not qualify it with that of the hereafter. They are not interested in the hereafter. Allah says, be careful of those type of people. You'd rather stay away from them. They will contaminate you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the limit and the extent of their knowledge is solely and only regarding this world. They've got nothing to offer you regarding the hereafter. Be careful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to save ourselves. And I want to just repeat that the worldly knowledge is not bad, but it needs to be qualified with the knowledge of the hereafter and the deen and the rules and regulations regarding what Allah wants from us, my brothers and sisters. Let's move on to Surah Al-Qamar. It's the 54th Surah of the Quran. One verse that stands out in this beautiful Surah is something to do with the Quran. You know, in Surah Saad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us why He revealed the Quran. Why did He send it to us? He says in Surah Saad, 
كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب A book that is blessed that we have revealed in order that its verses be pondered deeply upon Allah revealed the book so that you can ponder deeply over its verses and so that it can be a reminder for those with sound intellect. My brothers and sisters, we read the Quran. Yes, the tilawa you will get a reward for, no doubt. You will get a reward for every letter that you read. There is no doubt. But your duty towards the Quran is way beyond that. It goes to sitting and pondering over the verses of the Quran. You have to learn the meanings, whether you like it or not. Make an effort. My brothers and sisters, there are so many things we've learned from childhood right up to the age of 60, 65. But we have not yet gone through the verses of the Quran. And that is the book that will carry us to Jannah. Al Quran hujjatul laka aw alayk. The Prophet says, This Quran will bear witness for you or against you. We learned the rules of tax and commerce and accounts and so on. And we knew everything. When we had a new gadget, we learned how to operate it. But we did never ever spend time learning how to operate our lives in accordance with the meanings of the Quran. Subhanallah. So Allah says, we revealed the book. It's a blessed book. The reason why we revealed it was, لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ For its verses to be pondered deeply over. Tadabbur is not just to think about something. It is to ponder deeply upon the verses. So Allah says, it is a reminder for those who ulul albab, those who have sound knowledge, those who have a mind, those who have a sound mind. That's the meaning of ulul albab, lub, the people who have a solid mind. If you really would like to benefit, pick up the Quran, learn it, read its meaning, attend the tafsir lessons, go deep into it and enjoy swimming into this ocean that has absolutely no coast known as the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us from this beautiful love. MashaAllah, we derive lots of joy by listening to melodious recitation of the Quran because the Quran is a book that is all round. You derive joy by reading it without understanding or by listening to it without understanding. Imagine what you will achieve if you were to understand. Amazing. Amazing. When you hear a lovely recitation, like some of the recitals we heard earlier today, subhanallah, you will find lots of joy. People will become emotional and cry. What if you understood it? What would have happened? Your life will change. Look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Their lives changed because they understood. That's why. One verse moved them completely gone. The life changed. It flipped the other way around. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us without. We listen to khatma upon khatma upon khatma and our lives have not changed. The reason is, number one, lack of sincerity. Number two, disinterest in committing to understand the Quran. I hope these few words can motivate us to attend the tafsir lessons inshallah and to look into the Quran and its verses and to enjoy this beautiful Arabic language. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us and grant us goodness. So this verse, it's repeated several times in the surah. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِن مُدَّكِرِ And indeed, we have made the Qur'an very easy in the aspect of dhikr. Now, dhikr refers to three things here. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ We have made the Qur'an very easy to understand, to memorize, to read, to understand and to memorize. It's very easy. It's not only the memorization that is referred to as dhikr. A dhikr is also a reminder. Subhanallah. So to understand the Quran is quite simple. Are you going to make the effort? To memorize it is quite simple. To read it is quite simple. Are you going to make the effort? Evidence of it is that the non-Arabs sometimes read the Quran more perfectly than those who are born Arabs. That's evidence. Those who don't understand the language can sometimes recite the Quran in a more correct way than those who were born with the language. That is the evidence that of this verse. Allah says we made it easy to read for everybody. We made it easy to understand for everybody and to memorize for everybody. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. Brothers and sisters, I give you a word of encouragement. Do you know 
that if you start off memorizing the Quran one verse a day, how much? One verse a day. And your intention is to complete the Quran. And say you did not complete it and you passed away. You will be written as a person who completed the Quran. Because the hadith says, al wa innama li kulli ma nawa. All actions shall be judged based on their underlying intentions and the person will be given whatever he intended. Subhanallah. I intended to finish. I started one verse. One verse. So I must have completed maybe 10 Jews over so many years. Allah, if I pass away, I'm convinced that I will get a reward of being a hafir. Because that's what Allah tells us. That's why my brothers and sisters make an effort. خَيْرُ amali مَا دِيمَ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنْ قَلْ The best of deeds are those that are done regularly, even if they are very, very little. Then we move on to the next beautiful, beautiful surah number 55. Surah number 55. Do you know which surah that is? Ar-Rahman. Named after the mercy of Allah. But that mercy of Allah will only come to those who recognize the favors of Allah. Have you thought of it? It is called Ar-Rahman. And in that verse, Allah repeats so many times, Which is it of the favors of your Lord? Do you deny, O mankind and jinn kind? If you are to deny the favors of Allah, how do you expect the mercy of Allah? This is Surah Ar-Rahman. It starts off by saying Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. So if you want the mercy of Allah, recognize the favors of Allah upon you. And understand that Allah has prepared Jannah, He has prepared Jahannam, and Allah has granted you so much in the dunya. If you look at that surah, there are three main things mentioned in the surah. One is that which is in this world, the skies and the earth and the oceans, etc., etc. And thereafter, that which is in heaven. And thereafter, that which is in hellfire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it quite clear that there is this world, then there is heaven, and then there is hell. It's up to you to understand if you appreciate the favors of Allah upon you, it will lead you to obey Allah's instruction. How do you show that you are grateful? By fulfilling your salah, by dressing appropriately, by stopping haram, by fulfilling that which Allah has asked you. That is how you show gratitude, by worshipping Allah alone. And by ensuring that you fulfill your obligations unto Allah and you try your best to abstain from the prohibitions, that is how you show that you are grateful. And by declaring the praise of Allah. But when we declare the praise of Allah, my brothers and sisters, let us be genuine. You know what genuine means? When you say Subhanallah, you've got to mean that you are glorifying Allah. You don't just say it without thinking of it. Think of it. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. These are beautiful, powerful statements. If you are sincere, Allah will reward you. But if you are not sincere, it just piles up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the most sincere. Let's move to the next surah. Surah Al-Waqi'ah, again surah number 56. Allah makes mention of a few aspects in this surah. And He makes mention of His power. And the fact that if He wants, He can change any goodness into bad. And vice versa. It's the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take a look at how Allah says, the children you have, who caused the semen? Who caused the semen to come forth? Was it you or Allah? It is Allah. If Allah wanted, He could have made it not come forth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. He then goes on to say, look at the, the crop. Look at what you have sown into the ground. Who makes it grow? And who causes the rain to fall? If Allah wants, He can make your crop such that you cannot consume it. He can destroy it if He wishes. And He can make the water such that you won't be able to drink it. And He can cause the fire not to even burn if Allah wills. Who is the one who created the trees? And, the, and who decided that a dry log is going to burn? All this is made mention of in Surah Al-Waqi'ah. And for your information, Al-Waqi'ah, it is referring to the last day and referring to the day of judgment, subhanallah. Something that is definitely going to happen, it's going to come. And Allah says, when that strikes, it's going to be too late. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a turning point before the striking. Brothers and sisters, we move on to Surah Al-Hadid. It is a surah named after steel, iron, subhanallah, al-Hadid. Some of the huffad, they say, it is as tough as its name. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. This surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important it is to spend in His cause 
with belief. So if you spend and you don't believe in Allah, we've spoken about it in the past where He will give you a recompense, but that will be in this world. So you will have a beautiful recompense in the world. Some people who don't believe, but they do a lot of good deeds. Allah says, we will give them in the dunya, perhaps good health, perhaps good children, perhaps happiness, contentment. They'll enjoy here and there. And when they get to the akhirah, we will tell them, you didn't believe. You didn't believe in the hereafter. So we gave you whatever you wanted in the world. Now, for those who believe, Allah says, فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَأَنْفَقُوا لَهُمْ أَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ Those from among you who believe and spend, spend from what Allah has given them. For them, there will be a massive reward. أَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ Kabir means massive, big, huge reward. So Allah says, if you believe and you spend. Now, what is the etiquette of spending, my brothers and sisters? Sometimes people do a collection. So the collection drive, people will stand up and say, right, how much are you giving? One guy says, I'll give 10,000. Another says, I'll give 12,000. Who can better that? Someone says, I'll give 20,000. Another guy says, I'll give 25,000. So a man sitting in front might say, you know what? Isn't this wrong? Aren't we just boasting? Aren't we just, you know trying to show off my brothers and sisters if your donation is going to encourage others to give a better donation then it is better to disclose what you've given did you hear that this happened at the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uthman ibn affan radiyallahu anhu at the time of the battle of tabuk he came with something umar ibn khattab radiyallahu anhu came with half of his wealth he was asked how much is this so he said you know what this is half of my wealth subhanallah it was an encouragement for people and everyone saw it and he probably thought, subhanallah, you know what? I've achieved, mashallah. I brought 50% of whatever I own, whatever I own, not my savings, 50% of my owning, what I own. And here comes Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an. He put forth whatever he had when he was asked, what is this? How much have you brought? He said, everything, 100%. What's back there at home? Nothing. So what have you left with your family? I've left Allah and his Rasul. These were the people. Had it not been for that to be disclosed, we would not have known it today. So some people, yes, there is a hadith which says, and I mentioned it in the Jumu'ah, which says a person should spend their wealth in such a way that the left hand does not know what the right hand has spent. Yes, when you're giving your charities, you do so quietly. Unless there is reason for you to disclose it, and that reason is valid and legitimate, then it is permissible and sometimes it is better. When is it better? When you know it is an encouragement. For example, there is a person who doesn't have much and he's donating a lot for the sake of Allah. But he knows that if, if I am going to donate, for example, 10,000, inshallah, that man, he can give much more than this. You see, it's a, it's a good feeling. And the cause is a very, very genuine cause. So he gives and he tells his friend, listen, I gave 10. I expect you to give 20, inshallah. The idea is not to boast, but to show, you know, you can do better than me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Yes, there is a fine line, I do know. So if a person is really feeling doubtful, then perhaps just hide it and inshallah, you, Allah will reward you for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So that is regarding spending. Then there is verse number 16, where Allah tells us, and this is a beautiful verse, a reminder for all of us. You see, we all want to turn. We all want to become better people. We all want to quit our habits. But we think to ourselves, mm, you know what? Hey, I'm still a bit young, you know, now a little bit more, inshallah. Hey, it's, you know, I don't know. Inshallah, I'll see when I go for Hajj, perhaps after two years, then I want to change my life. Listen what Allah says. Verse number 16 of Surah Al-Hadid, which is Surah number 57. أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Has the time not come for those who believe to soften their hearts towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, towards the remembrance of Allah. Has the time not come for them to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which has been revealed by Allah 
When are they going to turn to Allah? Brothers and sisters, when are we going to turn to Allah? Has the time not come? Is it not enough what we've done? Allah says, don't be like the people of the book of aforetime who decided they will take their time and then Allah hardened their hearts. So they became sinful people. Because their hearts were hardened. Once your heart is hardened, it becomes very, very difficult to turn to Allah. So while your heart is softened, while you are seated in the house of Allah, make your resolution in a way that you don't say, I'm going to change after Hajj and next year. No, I'm changing here and now. I've quit my bad ways right now for the sake of Allah. I will leave this masjid a pure person, a person who is forgiven, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Make it easy for us to save ourselves through His mercy. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Subhanallahi bihamdihi subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.